Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first Who's Farno Viking Facebook Live of 2024. Can you believe we are in 2024? We made it. So excited. So my name is Kathy. I'm one of the SVP educators. And today I'm going to talk about embellishment. So this is for um, pretty much every, um, every one of you. It's all sewing related things things that you can add to a project or a piece of fabric to create more interest in fabric. And it's all done in the sewing machine. So no embroidery at all today. And I will be using the Designer Ruby 90 today um, as my machine. You'll see it here in a minute. And I wanna make sure to welcome everybody who is out there watching us live. We appreciate that you can join us live on both our Facebook channel as well as our YouTube channel. So welcome to our YouTubers and Facebookers. And once again, I'm Kathy, and today we are going through the embellishment, um, it's embellishment ideas, okay? So surface ideas where we can add threads, um, yarns, uh, sequins, um, pearls by the yard, beads by the yard, that type of thing to give a little bit more excitement. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna switch your view so that you can see my machine. And here we go. So once again, I am working on our beautiful Designer Ruby 90 today. It is a sewing plus embroidery machine. And I'm already in a menu. I'm going to take you back out here in just a moment. And um, oops, I clicked the wrong button. There we go. Uh, so that I can show you where I'm starting at. And please, throughout the live today, if you have a question, please put it in our chat. In the background, we have Amy and Ryan helping me out um, with questions. And they'll feed the questions on to me. Anything we can't answer today live, we'll come back and um, view the comments and put them into the recording. So if you miss it, you can come back in and rewatch. Alrighty, so I'm at the screen on the Ruby 90, making sure you can see that, yes. So this is what the Designer Ruby 90 screen looks like when you start it up. I don't have my embroidery arm on, so it's automatically in the sewing mode. And I, I'm just gonna touch my home button to take me back to my stitches. So I have a plethora of stitches on this machine. And I'm starting off with our three hole yarn couching foot today. And there are some special stitches that go along with the three hole yarn couching stitches a uh, foot, pardon me. So I'm going to move my screen down just a bit so you can see this here. I have in my specialty stitch menu in the P as in pin menu uh, stitches uh, on this machine. There's stitches 16 through 20 that are specific to yarn couching with the three hole yarn foot. All right. And there's a little description right here on the bottom of the stitch when I have a stitch selected that tells me that with this stitch, I can sew on yarn and cord. It requires the optional three hole yarn foot and it even gives the part number that you can take to your dealer um, and have and then make that purchase. So it's it's an optional foot. I'm going to show you two versions of the foot. I'm trying to decide which way is best to show you. Not this way. Hold on. Let's get you over here. Okay. So some of you have machines that have an opening in the throat plate that is seven millimeters. Okay. And so for those of you, that goes like back to our, like our diamond machines and our original Ruby machines and things like that. You're going to use the, the foot that's sized for um, groups one through seven. So even if you have a basic um, Who's Front of Viking, you can purchase this foot. Yes, there are special stitches, but I'm going to tell you, 
you could use a wide zigzag stitch and still um, make this foot work. So it'll work on a, even a more basic machine. Let's say you have an opal. It will not have these special stitches, but you can use this foot on it. For those of you with the uh, designer Epic 2, 3, or the 95Q sewing machine, we do have a foot that has the integrated IDF cutout in it. So it's the same foot. The holes in the foot are identical, but it will accommodate those nine millimeter wide stitches and the use of your IDF. So there are two versions of this. So make sure that you tell your dealer or your retailer which, which machine you want to purchase that foot for. Okay, so let's talk about how to set this foot up. And I have a piece of yarn. So I'm gonna use uh, my, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, because I'm working on the Ruby 90, I'm going to be using the seven millimeter wide foot because I'm working on a seven millimeter wide machine. However, I'm going to show you, I already have that one threaded up. You know, I kind of cheated a little bit here. I want to show you how this threads. All right. So I'm going to just check to see if you're in view. And I need to come back. Okay. So the foot comes with this needle threader. I know it's kind of hard to see. Thankfully, it is on a black stick, a little plastic stick, and we have this loopy um, fish line here. And that's that works as our needle threader, okay? I find the easiest way to do this is to put the end of the uh, stick, the handle, into one of the three feet, uh, holes, and then take my yarn end, place it through, the uh, fish line hook and then just pull it to the back. I want the short tail at the back and all of the yarn I'm going to be stitching here on the front. Okay. All right, let's see here. And then I have um, a total of three holes so I can fill all three holes. But, you know, we're sewists and we're creative people. We can choose to just use, you know, two holes or even just one hole or all three. Now, you also do not have to thread with the same color yarn in each hole. You can, you can change it up. So if we wanted to put a contrast color of yarn here through the middle. And let me reach around and grab my other piece of yarn. This one's a little bulkier of a yarn. I've used it on its own with this foot and it's quite nice. I'm going to go ahead and put another one through. My greatest fear is, is, is dropping that little threader so that it makes it, um, so I can't use it here. But there we go. We have two silver, one on each side, and then um, the blue in the middle there. So you do not have to do all the same. Your choice. You're the creative person that sits behind the machine. So you get to have some say in what it looks like. Okay. So this foot is the three hole yarn um, stitch foot. Three hole yarn stitch foot. All right, let's come back and I'm going to go ahead and attach this foot with the yarns. I put a knot in the end of my yarns that are coming out the back side of the foot so that I don't like if I drop my foot, my yarns aren't going to come out and I don't have to rethread them again. It's just easier to do that. And you can see that the back of the foot has a little cutout for that yarn to lay in, okay? So I'm gonna 
put this on the foot, on the ankle, and I want to make sure that that knot is not under the foot, but is sticking out behind the foot. All right. And I have a little swatch here. I wanted to get my bigger piece. Let me just trade what's under the needle. Get a little preview of some other fun stuff that's going to happen today. All right. But I want to show you this sample here. I stitched out all five of the specific stitches that you can use with this yarn couching foot. So um, they, they are um, stitch 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 in the order they are on the Designer Ruby 90. And the stitches um, are in the same sequence on all the machines that have these specific stitches, okay? But you can see they really give a different look to, this, to the yarn. And I am using a contrasting thread so that you can see, but I might choose to use a matching or coordinating thread um, that maybe goes with my project. Um, today I just have like a kind of a brightish pink on so you can better see it. So I am going to engage my needle down button. I love that feature. Can't sew without a needle down on any machine. And that way every time I stop, um, my um, needle will stay down and help anchor the project. So as you can see in front, I'm just kind of holding this. I'm going to go ahead and sew. I'm just kind of holding my yarns. I'm not stretching them at all. I'm just keeping them relatively flat. You don't have to hold them high up or anything. And I don't have to stitch a straight line. If I want to stop and smooth out my yarns if they're getting tangled. I have quite a long piece here for you. Just do that and keep sewing. I'm going to turn this so hopefully you can see this coming out the back side. I want to go ahead and stop. So I touched my stop button so it finishes one repeat of my stitch. And I'm just going to raise my foot up and then gently pull to the back. Let me swing this around for you. So my yarns are still connected. They're still threaded in my foot. And I can trim my yarns behind the foot and then pull them back out. That way I don't have to re-thread all of those, those three holes, okay? So you can see that you can turn curves and um, really create different looks, especially if you uh, vary your yarn colors in the, um, in the foot. And let me grab, let's see have a lot of feet in front of me guys so bear with me a minute here while I find the one I want and hmm, here it is I wanted to stitch out a little swatch now I am going to use this IDF foot I, I'm not working on a machine with IDF but it will still work um, and I'm going to just switch I'm going to switch over to a utility stitch because, like I said earlier, you don't have to have a specific yarn stitch. We just need a stitch um, that will cover the yarns or couch over the yarns. Yarn couching and, and thread couching is something that's been around 
for a long, long time. I particularly like um, a stitch like this here that um, it's actually called a flat lock stitch on the machine. Now it's not a serge or flat lock stitch, so I don't want you to be confused about that. It's a sewing flat lock stitch, but it usually has, um, let me zoom in a little bit if I can, um, two straight lines and a zigzag that joins it in between. I am going to adjust the stitch width as wide as I can make it. And I'm going to increase my stitch length because I don't want a lot of thread to cover my yarns. I just want a little bit of thread to cover my yarns. And I'm going to grab, um, because I put that blue yarn in there, it's not going to show up great on the blue fabric. So let me just grab a swatch here of white. And I will switch you back in just a moment so you can see what's happening at the machine. All righty, so we're back at the machine and I have the heavier blue yarn in the middle and then the silver thread, silver or gray threads on the outside and I'm just going to go ahead and do a little stitching for you on this stitch. So this isn't a particularly fancy stitch but it will work. And then let me go ahead and just show you a plain Jane zigzag stitch. Again, I'm at my machine, I'm making it as wide as I can, and I'm lengthening it. Like, I'm lengthening it, on here I can go like up to, wow, I can go quite wide. It'll let me go up to 12 millimeters in length. I think I wanna reduce that to about nine. Let's see what that looks like. All righty. I'm pretty much out of yarn, so I'm just going to take that off. But you can see here, you know what? My camera looks a little bit of fuzzy, so I'm going to switch you back so you can see me, and I can hold this sample up better for you. So... Let's go ahead and do that. I want to show you the back side as well. All righty. So at the top is the stitch I used with looks like two straight stitches with a zigzag in between. At the bottom is a plain Jane zigzag. If I turn this over, white on white's kind of hard to see. I'm sorry, there's so much light glare here. Um, let me switch you back thought that would work. You know what? Sometimes cloudy days here actually are worse. So let me take you over here and show you. There you go. So again, a totally different look. And that can be done on any machine with that foot. All right. All right, I'm going to just check here on some questions. And do I just, do I adjust the speed? So I typically do not, but I might want to adjust the speed uh, if I'm just doing a, a more basic, like a zigzag stitch, because that stitch will sew quite fast. Now, when... I stitch with the specialty stitches. So these samples here, which are the five different specialty stitches, those, the machine actually does some slowdown on its own. So our program decorative stitches are all programmed for a maximum speed that they will stitch at in order to achieve the best looking stitch. Okay. So our designers and engineers, they take care of that in the programming. So sometimes it seems as if a stitch is um, stitching a little on the slow side. It's because it's programmed that way because you get a better stitch. You know, faster isn't always better, even though most of us are in a hurry. <laughs> okay. Now, I wanted to also point out to you, um, when I was experimenting, I this is just a, a cotton quilting fabric, but I did back it with some woven 
fusible interfacing to give it more body. I often do this when I want to use a quilting cotton and have a little more substance to it. Okay. And I noticed when I was doing the third stitch over, I got a lot of puckering and I was not real thrilled with that because I've done these stitches over and over again and not had puckering. So I'm like, well, let's try a little bit of extra stabilizer on the back. So this is our stitch and ditch stabilizer that we make for Who's Runner Viking. It's a paper stabilizer. It's similar to tissue paper, but it's very smooth on one side to help it um, flow through the machine. And when you remove this, any little bits that are left over, if you wash your item, those bits will just kind of dissipate in your laundry. So um, very friendly to our sewing machines. But by putting just that extra little bit, and you can layer. I use two layers under these two rows of stitching here. I got much better results. No puckering whatsoever. Sometimes you need a little extra stabilizer to get things where you want it to be. Okay. So let's see. We have a couple other questions. Um, do I need a specialty needle? I don't. I'm just using a rayon um, embroidery thread of 40 weight on, on the machine. So I have in an embroidery needle. I probably could have used a universal needle. I like the embroidery needle with the rayon threads because um, the eye is a little elongated. And so it reduces the friction on a more delicate thread than a sewing thread. So nothing terribly um, special on that. I would worry more about your fabric. For instance, if I was doing this kind of decorative stitching on denim, I would probably go with a heavier needle. Being quilting cotton, I just used a 75 or an 80. Um, I believe I have an 80 in my machine today. Um, but if I was going over something that has a lot more stiffness or body to it, I would probably go up a size and I might even switch over to a denim needle if my denim is very stiff. Okay. All right. Um, so how can you use these stitches? So you can, you can pretty much embellish anything you like. My little sampler here, which I'm working on embellishing with you today, this is just going to become a decorative piece of fabric that I can then turn into a little bag. So I'm planning on making a little bag with some fun decorative stitches on it. But let's say you have a plain, um, a plain shirt. Maybe you have um, just like a, a button down shirt and you want a little jazz it up. You could do any one of the stitches I'm going to show you today, like say down each side of the buttonholes or around a cuff. You could um, create embellished fabric and do pillows. You can embellish embroidery that you already have. And I have a piece here. If it didn't run away, well, it has a little fish on it, so it would have to have swum away. I will try to find that here for you in just a moment that we can add some fun things to, um, to embellish. I also, um, I've not personally added anything like this to a quilt, um, but I certainly could. If it's a quilt I'm going to snuggle under, I probably am not going to use like the sequins. They might be a little rough um, in texture, but I could certainly use yarn couching because yarn is nice and soft. Um, it would be great on anything quilted like the wall hanging that's behind me. I could come back in and add um, some embellishments to this wall hanging um, here in my studio. So um, let me switch back so you can see a machine. Oh, hold on. I think I just saw another question pop up before I switch. Um, okay. Uh, someone has um, used this foot to put sparkly yarn around the hem of a little girl's top. It was very cute. I agree. There are so many pretty yarns out there. And I'm not a big um, crocheter. I, I do more crocheting than knitting. I'm, I'm a really poor knitting <laughs> person. Um, but there are so many yarns that I'm tempted to buy just because they're so pretty. And that would be a great use of the sparkly yarns. My gray yarn today has a little bit of uh, metallic thread in it. So um, that's kind of fun. It kind of picks up the different colors. 
Okay, so I'm going to come back to the machine and just give me a second to swing around. I know that the, us educators, we always remind you that like we're sewing around cameras and things. So sometimes it's not, don't be jealous of our setups because we um, are working in tight quarters. Okay. So let's talk, let's see what our time is. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about another foot that is similar to the three hole yarn couching foot. And that foot is the seven hole foot. And again, let me find my other version. This foot's available in two versions. If you have a seven millimeter wide machine, you would use the seven millimeter wide or the seven hole foot. And then we have a nine, um, I'm sorry, it's an 11 hole foot as well. And that foot works with our machines that have the nine millimeter wide opening. And my nine millimeter or my nine millimeter foot seems to have flown the coop. So we will work with the seven today. I have it pre-threaded and the threading works just like the three hole yarn, but you would probably not be able to see me do it on camera. Um, it comes with the traditional kind of old fashioned needle threader that, you know, is in every grandmother's um, box to thread hand needles. The holes are a lot smaller, but it operates exactly the same way. And once again, I've tied a knot in the back of my stitches. It's, I'm sorry, the back of my thread to hold those together so they can't pull out. This time, I've set up my threads with um, multiple colors. So I have two colors going here. And I can lay those out in a number of different manners. And quickly take you back to my machine screen because this is one I absolutely love this basic stitch on my Ruby 90 it is it's um, stitch 20 I showed that to you earlier it's the flat lock stitch again I'm going to make it um, seven millimeters wide maybe seven and a half no I can, I can only go to seven lengthen it but not as much as I did with the yarn I'm going to stick to six and a half and just so. So once again, again, just holding the yarns in front, holding the yarns in front so we can just guide them. And my thread, I believe my thread, my upper thread did break. Okay, let me just take a moment here to rethread my upper thread. I raised my foot all the way because you don't want to re-thread with your presser foot down. If you do, the thread cannot get in to the tensions properly. And I'm going to also use my stitch restart button. So it restarts at the beginning of the stitch. Again, raise the foot up and my needle up as well. And I'm going to pull back. I do have um, a little bit of yarn left in here, so I'm just going to leave that attached to my foot and show you what that looks like. Okay. Now, my red cord, what I used for this is, is pearl cotton. And the pearl cotton I used is a size 8. Um, you can get like different sizes. Basically, if it'll fit through the holes in the foot and it and it'll pass through smoothly, you're good to go on it. If it's um, too thick and it's not flowing easily, that's not going to be the best choice. You might have um, some resistance on that. But you can get this in different colors. Um, you can also purchase it on the skeins in the aisle with like the embroidery flosses. 
but it's heavier than embroidery floss. It's not the multi-strand. It's kind of like a, a curly skein of embroidery floss. But just look for something called pearl cotton. Um, you know what? Anything's up for game. You know, if it can pass through the holes in the foot and you can couch it down, you know, more power to you. So that is the type of thread used for that foot. So same idea, same concept, just a different look. One is a little bulkier. Uh, one is a little bit smoother. Alrighty. So now let's switch gears and let me show you. I have my other feet in this little basket. I want to show you the sequined. The foot I used to sew the sequins on with. It's not called a sequins foot. It is called a fancy trim foot. Let me hold it up here. It is a clear foot. So again, it's it's one of those that's kind of hard to see on camera, but it has a long um, piece in front with a little tunnel. And I'm actually going to um, use a little piece of flat ribbon to show you how this works. And yes, you could indeed use ribbon. You can use any trim that'll fit in that slot. Okay. So this is just some sparkly flat trim. So it's, I could use something a little bit wider and it'll pass through there and it makes a nice flat guide as you're sewing on. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and show you this before I do my sequence. Right. All right, so uh, again, I want to use um, a, just a basic stitch. I think I will go with, uh, let's see here. I'm going to go with a standard zigzag. And I think, so I'm experimenting, guys. I just got a whim and I decided to experiment. So, okay, you can see. Let me see how wide this is. You know what? I'm going to put my handy dandy little magnifying lens in place, but I don't know if that's going to block your view. I think you're okay. All right. Let's see if I can get you in a little closer. All right. So, and I'll needle down, needle down. So, I want to make this a little bit wider. And I probably could go just a tad. And I have a pretty high contrasting thread on here, so um, that helps you see it better. Alrighty, cut that thread. Let me swing that out of the way. Well, I um, used kind of a dark thread. I guess you can see that, okay? But playing with the width before you do your real project is the secret to that. I'm, I didn't like the narrower. I ended up with my settings here at the end at 4.5 for my width. And I did a length of 5.5 to spread that out a little bit more, okay? So that's an alternative use for the foot. You know, we buy our accessory feet, and sometimes you can only use them for one purpose. But isn't it nice when you can use it for a second purpose? Um, to me, I'm getting more value for my money when I can use a foot for multiple, um, multiple ideas and multiple projects. So let's now talk about the original purpose for this foot was to sew flat sequin trim. So single sequins on a string, easily on the machine. So I have um, some sequins here. It's important that you're feeding the sequins in through the end of the foot um, smoothly, okay? So I like run my fingers down and make sure the sequins are smooth. If you turn it the other way, you can see like my sequins are getting all distorted and all a mess. So those sequins are going to get cut off. I'm not going to even try to straighten them out. I probably could, but I'm not going to. I can take these off and use my 
fun sequence stitches on my machine. And when we feed this through, we're going to feed the end through the tunnel. Again, smooth side. So think about fish scales or like fur or something. You want it to be smooth. And you can see how that just fits in that tunnel and comes out the back side. And then I'm going to attach this to the ankle. There we go. And I actually want to sew on my big piece here. So we'll move that one aside and bring this piece back. And I think I'll go down a corner here. I have so many things I want to show you, so I don't want to get too far behind. You know our education team, we're always uh, trying to cram more in. All right, back to our stitch, our recommended stitch. Um, again, I can use just a basic zigzag. I'm going to lengthen that out as much as I can because I really don't want to see too much thread. So at my machine screen, I'm using my basic centered zigzag um, keeping my width at about seven and my length i'm going all the way up to 12. all right all right back at my machine i'm gonna lower my foot and then just start stitching now if i think that might be a little too long of a length i can of course shorten it up let's take it down to eight and when i change there we go let's get that needle up oops thought i pressed my thread cutter but i didn't you can see here on the back you can see much easier because I have black interfacing on the back of that. You can see my wide zigzag stitch. All right. Now, here I chose, let me come back to you. All right, hold on. I have a message from the team. Yeah, I see that I'm getting some flickering. So let me, uh, let me come back to you. All righty, guys. And see. Okay, we should be good here. Um, here's the stitch on my sequins. And you can see I did a zigzag on the back. You can see that's how it got attached. You don't have to do a straight line. You can see I did a nice curvy line here. Just kind of followed along my pearls, which we'll do here in a moment. So you don't have to have boring straight lines. Now I started to say before I uh, switched cameras for you is I did use a pinkish colored thread and it blended really nicely in. But here on my multicolored sequins that I did earlier, I would probably do better off to use invisible thread. So that transparent thread that you can purchase at your local dealer um, would be a better choice. The sequins will appear to float more if you use that type of thread couple hints on using invisible thread in that you should slow your speed down i never sew full force on invisible thread it tends to stretch a little bit as it goes through the machine so i want to sew just a little bit slower not much just a little and i do like to use that longer um eyed embroidery needle or a top stitch needle a top stitch needle has a nice round hole in it again helps to reduce the friction um of and heat when you're sewing with that use regular sewing thread or your if you have embroidery um bobbins you can use your 60 weight bobbin thread in your bobbin with the transparent thread on top but you really don't want transparent thread both in the top and the bobbin if you should fill, um, want to do that, 
make sure you fill that transparent thread very slowly when you wind your bobbin. The, a lot of resources actually suggest hand winding it. Personally, I could not be bothered to hand wind an invisible bobbin. So if at all possible, I'm going to use a matching um, thread to the back of my project um, for invisible thread. That's my personal preference. You may have something different and that's fine. Um, but my recommendation is uh, sewing thread or your 60 weight embroidery bobbin thread in your bobbin with invisible or transparent thread on top. Okay. All right, here, a question um, is asked, does the zigzag go over the sequence or between them? Well, let's see here. The zigzag is a nice wide zigzag and it spans the width of the zigzag. You can kind of see it more so on the lighter colors. If I turn it over, you can see how wide that zigzag stitch is. And it just goes over top of them. And the sequins do lay nice and flat. They don't get ruffled up or anything with that. So your goal is to, to get that um, zigzag wide enough that it's spanning the width of the zigzag, okay? All righty. So um, I mentioned earlier that I am sewing on the Designer Ruby 90 today. And it, this is one of our Husqvarna Viking sewing and embroidery machines, a combo machine that is in our national ads. So if you get our emails um, reminding you about our Facebook lives, you might also be getting our emails with our product emails. You may see the uh, January specials in our national um, advertised. So our dealers and our retailers both honor these specials and the designer Ruby 90 has a bonus this month in the month of January. So if you didn't get that machine you wanted um, for Christmas, if, if Santa did not bring <laughs> that machine to you and you'd like a Ruby 90 this month, um, go visit your local dealer or retailer. And we have a special of a shopping spree. So with the machine and check with your retailer for the dollar amount, okay? You get a shopping spree and I, it's considerable amount. You'd be able to buy all the feed I showed you today with the shopping spree. So um, you can stock up on extra product, on extra feet, um, threads, you know, whatever your dealer is offering you um, with that shopping spree. So um, if you're looking for a new machine, uh, this is a great month to go out and, and take a look at that. Um, we do have some other models that have special pricing and you never know what else you might find at your local store. You know, it is January and a lot of um, retailers do inventory in January or they have some special clearance items or some, you know, um, restock items and you might get a bargain on you never know what. So check your local retailer for those items. All right. Um, let's see. It looks like we have another question before I move on to our next foot. Um, the question was, do the sequins break needles? Well, the sequins that are on the string, let me grab my pile of pink sequins here. They're very flexible and you can actually sew through these sequins um, typically without breaking a needle. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say you'll never break a needle with it. You could but they're not like the hard sequins that you see glued onto some of our really pretty specialty fabrics these days. They're much softer and flexible than that. If you break a needle, it's honestly not a big deal. Um, just take a moment, change your needle and uh, continue sewing. You might have to back up a couple stitches to catch you know, where that broke. But typically I, I don't break a needle doing this kind of stitching, okay? I might break a needle on some of those glued on sequins because they're very stiff, all right? Thank you for all your questions because um, you know everyone learns when you ask a question. Um, I've always said no question is a silly question. Okay, let's see how our camera's doing, all right. So I am going to turn back around and show you another foot. Okay. And it's in my other uh, basket here. There's actually two feet. These are the bead feet. And I know that um, 
Amy and Ryan are going to post the feed I mentioned in the um, chat along with um, their part numbers so that you can um, just take note of that and that'll help you find it. We also have an online accessory catalog at whosfarnaviking.com, our main webpage. And if you go under accessories, there's um, something called the accessory finder and then there's the accessory catalog. Go ahead and look at that accessory catalog. It's an online catalog and we have all the feet um, available for our machines. They'll tell you the part number, what machines they fit, and even a little blurb about how to use the feet. So if you can't remember a setting or a suggested stitch, you can just look at that online catalog and you have all the information that you need. Okay, I have two feet here on my machine and they look very similar, but one's a little bit um, taller than the other. We have two sizes of beading feet, one that takes um, up to four millimeter wide beads and one that's sized to fit the two three millimeter size beads. So my my beads I have today are these are these are hard to see. Let me go back to my silver ones. There we go. I think those you can see a little bit better. These are four millimeter wide. And if you're not sure, just take the beads and lay them in the tunnel on the underneath side of the foot. If the beads fit nice and flat. So this is the bottom side of my foot. Boy, they're little slippery devils. There we go. If the beads fit flat, then you're good to go. And I'll show that to you here by trying to put my four millimeter wide beads in my two millimeter wide foot. So you can see that my machine is not going to work very well trying to sew these larger beads with my two millimeter wide foot. Okay, so I'm going to set my two millimeter foot aside. Again, it's one of those clear feet. I don't want to lose it. And pointing out that it has the, the little channel underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that in place. There we go. And there are a couple recommended stitches for doing the curls or the beads. You can call it whatever way you like. Um, one is um, basically it's a little applique stitch, like what might be referred to on your machine as an heirloom applique stitch or a hand look applique stitch. And it's a stitch where you have some straight stitches and then it goes off to the side. Let me pick this one. Let me see. Which one do I like the best? I think I want this one. I want a stitch that kind of starts off to the side a little bit and I need to make it wider and longer because we don't need um, all those stitches in between. All right and so I went up to I'm going to go up to about five millimeters in width and about six in length. I just lengthened that as much as I could and so make sure on my sewing machine i just rotated my needle down to make sure that fits inside of my foot because that's a little bit of a narrower foot use my extra lift and i like to start with some beads coming out behind and i'll just start stitching here I usually try to take it slow in the beginning just to make sure things are going to clear okay. And you can see that that the needle is jumping over. Let me trim this tail out of your way. There you go. So the straight part of the stitch is jumping over in between the beads. Now again, this is a stitch that um, you could easily use a matching thread, either maybe matching to your pearls or your background fabric, or use a in, uh, transparent invisible thread. I could also use um, a stitch um, 
that's more like a blind hem type looking stitch. So I'm taking you back to just my utility stitches. Again, this is something you can do on a lot of other machines that don't have special stitches because I'm not using, a, you know, I'm not using anything super fancy here. I'm just choosing um, my blind hem woven um, stitch, or I could choose the one that's called a shell edge. You might also have one called an overcast stitch. All right. Any of those would work. But what I want you to note, let me come up higher here, is my stitch is going to start on the left or the right side. In this case, I chose one that's on the left. That little black dot there on the screen, that's going to um, start at the left. I don't want to have a stitch that starts in the middle because my pearls are running down the middle of my um, foot. And I don't, I will break a needle on that one for sure. So again, I'm going to make my width wider and let me increase my length as well. And go ahead and stitch with this one. So it's just a different look. And I'm going to, because I have this on a long roll of, of beads. I'm just going to snip between the beads to finish that off. Okay. Oops. My little magnifier. Out of the way. So I intentionally showed you with a contrasting thread so you can see what that looks like. This one's on the left. This one's on the right. Here I used a matching thread. I used a gray thread, real pale gray thread, so it doesn't show up nearly as much. And if I flip this over to the back side, this row of stitching here, this is where my pearls are or my beads are. Okay. So you can use, you can see the stitch I used to hold that in place. Okay. All righty. Let me take a look back here at questions. Um, looks like we're good on questions here. So I have a little bit of time left. Yes, I have a couple minutes left. And I wanted to show you one more foot. Let's see which camera are we on? Uh, let me switch you back. Here, I'm going to check that one and I'm going to show you this foot. This is a braiding foot. And Amy, this is not a foot that I gave you earlier in my listing, but it's just the, the braiding foot. Okay. Standard braiding foot fits all groups of machines. There's a little tunnel cut out of the back. Okay. And the ribbon that I showed you going through, <clears throat> excuse me, the fancy trim foot earlier. This is really the foot that was initially designed to stitch on a, a flat braid. You know, years ago, we had a foot. Um, I lost my zoom. There we go. We had a, um, a just, we used to get braid, you know, where you bought rick rack and things. Yeah, there was just a basic braid that you could buy in those little packages. Um, I know that my grandmother, great grandmother had lots of that kind of stuff um, in their sewing baskets. And if you were lucky like me, you inherited their stuff. It's kind of fun to look through at all. Um, but you know, today we have so many ribbons and trims, something about an eighth of an inch, whatever, again, that'll fit easily through that hole. All right, in the foot. And I'll just lower my foot. I did switch over to just your basic zigzag. All right. Just a everyday zigzag. Every machine has a zigzag on it in, in today's modern world. Made it a little wider than the default. I went to four and a half and I lengthened it up to six. That's just my settings. And go ahead and just zigzag this on. And again, you don't have to go in a straight line. You can curve it.
and if you're going to continue on you can just pull your ribbon through or your braid through and there you go i know that red shows up a lot better for you than the the green that i picked earlier but isn't that pretty and such a sparkle that that's very simple um uh, embellishment i can see that going like embellish along a seam embellish along a cuff or um the hem of something now it's not stretchy so beware if you put it on a stretch knit make sure you don't need to stretch that knit anymore and do use a little bit of stabilizer underneath it especially if you're working with a knit um, i would recommend something that you can temporarily fuse in, in place and then lift it off and trim back around it so that you get good support on, um, on that fabric. Okay. So I'm going to come back to you. There we go. All right. I don't see any other questions right now in the live um, chat, but again, if we didn't answer your question today, um, please um, do put it in the chat. We will be monitoring um, the comments for um, a week or so, and um, we will get you an answer, all right? Um, just a couple things. I wanna remind you that um, this is January of 2024, and this, the um, special I mentioned with the Ruby 90 that's going on nationwide in the United States is good through the end of the month. So through January 31st, 2024, if you're viewing this um, on a recording, I don't want you to be disappointed if it's February and you can't have that deal. But that is a promotion during January of 2024. And I want to thank everybody viewing us with um, either YouTube or Facebook or if you're watching us recorded. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, our next um, My Sonet Facebook Live is coming up on Wednesday, January the 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern or 2 p.m. Central. And Meredith and Bethany, um, two of our educators, will be introducing my Sonet for Beginners. So if you've got a new embroidery machine, maybe your first embroidery machine, or someone gifted you software, or you want to do a little bit more than what's built in um, to your embroidery machines, come watch Meredith and Bethany as they take you through some of the basics in my Sonet software. So head on over to the MySonet Facebook page and add your questions to the pinned post so they can be prepared to answer your questions on the day of the live. Again, that's on January the 10th. So hope to see you um, over there and we'll see you the next time here on our Who's Farno Viking channel on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great day. Bye-bye.